You're listening to Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick in association with Wexford Insurances. Challenge us at Wexford Insurances, 0818 31 30 30. Welcome back to this week's edition of Southeast Radio's Business Matters with me, Carl Fitzpatrick. I'm now joined in studio by Frank O'Keefe from Ernst & Young to discuss their Entrepreneur of the Year programme. Frank, you might start by telling me a little bit about the background to the Ernst & Young Entrepreneur of the Year programme, please. Yeah, sure. Um, this is the 16th year of the Ernst & Young Entrepreneur of the Year programme. And we started the programme in a recession, which we're currently in today. And I suppose, you know, we realised in Ernst & Young that government would set policy and they would create policy, but they weren't going to generate significant amount of jobs throughout every community around the island of Ireland. And we could see back then that foreign direct investment was starting to be, you know, attracted to Ireland, jobs were flooding in. But there was a real gap around the business indigenous leader, the entrepreneur. And they were the unheard voice around attracting talent and around growing their businesses and really getting that acclaim that they, was, they deserved and that was necessary to help them build their businesses and build their brands. So that was really our idea around starting the Ernst & Young Entrepreneur of the Year programme, really to try and build a community of entrepreneurs. And so I suppose some of the facts and figures of our Ernst & Young Entrepreneur of the Year alumni community is that we have had 310 entrepreneurs enter our program as finalists over that period of time. Those 310 entrepreneurs employ 140,000 people. They collectively generate revenue of 15 billion euros. Now these are 310 of Ireland's best entrepreneurs. Last year they generated and created an additional 12,600 jobs. And our finalists alone last year from 2012 created 1,000 new jobs. I'd like to speak to you about the three categories of entrepreneur. Uh, The emerging, what exactly do you mean by that? So I suppose really the emerging category is identifying some of the most progressive businesses in the island of Ireland, some of the most fantastic innovators, um, technology-based, pharma-based, it's not sectoralised, but businesses that are going to make a real difference to Ireland Inc., not today, but in the future. The the businesses that are trying to attract the appropriate talent to grow those businesses and go on the journey with the entrepreneur and to really acclaim those entrepreneurs as some of the best new startups and and new generating businesses on the island of Ireland and give them a platform, not just nationally but internationally, to really grow their network, grow their brands, identify new opportunities and then help them grow their businesses to create jobs here in Ireland. What are the criteria attached to applying for, let's say, that particular category emerging? Yeah, and I think it's very easy to apply generally. But if you're an emerging entrepreneur, I suppose the key, the key criteria is that you must be in business for two years. You must own at least 5% of that business and be a founder and still involved. A lot of our entrepreneurs in the emerging category are actually serial entrepreneurs that have been there and done it and sold really good businesses but have come back in to the programme with their new, next venture. And then you would also have entrepreneurs who are you know, newly, newly out of school or n- new graduates uh, with a very good idea. They might have come out of a multinational and found a niche area to really grow a product or service. And that's really the key criteria in the emerging category. It's not onerous. So we would, I suppose my call out, Carl, to emerging entrepreneurs is really for them to log on to www.eoy.tv. And that's our you know, website where you will also be able to get an online brochure and you will be also able to get an online nomination form. It takes about five minutes to complete. Um, that Once that's submitted, w- myself, my fellow partners and my team uh, in the Entrepreneur of the Year programme will get, invo- we'll get in touch with those entrepreneurs and we'll go out, we'll do all the hard work. So we'll go out, we'll listen to the story, understand the business, understand the trajectory of where it's going. Judges are looking for growth, Um, in the emerging category but they're looking for sustainability in the industry and in the international category they're looking for you know innovation how the businesses are looking forward where are they going how did it start up what does the entrepreneur do outside of business you know do they actually mentor do they give back there's all different criterion elements it's in our brochure on page five of our brochure but it's very simple and I suppose the key ask is that you know This program makes a massive difference to all entrepreneurs, but especially the emerging category. I suppose our emerging category can be 
the hardest to get into because there's some significant marketing and advertisement ability. It gives you access to the best entrepreneurial network in the island of Ireland and also helps build your brand and showcase your brand nationally and internationally. And let's have a quick chat about the industry category. Tell me a bit about that. Well, I suppose the industry category, again, is a step up from the emerging area. Uh, criteria would be pretty similar, but I suppose what we're looking at here is entrepreneurs from family businesses that might have brought the business to a completely different level, or entrepreneurial-led startup businesses that are well-established, that have a very strong presence on the island of Ireland, uh, and their market would either be Ire Ireland nationally or would be Ireland and the UK. And what we find in the industry category is some phenomenal entrepreneurs that are either in manufacturing or in retail, uh, not necessarily always the kind of new technology focused or, or life sciences businesses, but businesses that have a good track record, a very strong track record of employment here on the island of Ireland, very strong brands, um, and really have the ability to move that onto a different level. Your third category, the internationalisation category, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, I suppose, again, the international category is really catered for some of the really big businesses that are either head office here, where the Irish entrepreneur has his head office here, and looks at the, you know, no, no boundaries in relation to a global market, and is, I suppose, doing business in multiple markets. Or also we attract in an awful lot of entrepreneurs who are Irish, who have built their business somewhere else around the world, have their head office maybe somewhere else around the world, but are also bringing part of that business back home and generating and creating jobs here on the island of Ireland. I suppose the best example of that would be Liam Casey, PCH International in Cork, um, known as Mr China, has this employs nearly 7,000 people globally, a significant amount of them in Shenzhen, and spends an awful lot of his time between Shenzhen, Cork, and uh, San Francisco. I want to ask you a couple of questions that would be in people's minds right now. Yeah. Does a company need to be profitable in order to enter this competition? Uh, no, I think that's the, the, the most important thing. Um, I think an awful lot of companies on the island of Ireland in the current economic difficulties that we have, uh, a lot of them are in a difficult situation right now. And really it's around what's the trajectory like for those businesses, not just today, but into the future. And I suppose a strong balance sheet is helpful. Uh, criteria such as you know, sustainability of their business doesn't necessarily mean profitability, but sustainability, opportunity to grow into different markets, um, the amount of people that they would employ, how important they are to the local region and community. They're really important. And what the judges are also looking for is how can the Ernst & Young Entrepreneur of the Year programme make a difference to those entrepreneurs? So they might not necessarily be profitable, but by entering into the community or into the network, what impact could that network have on helping that entrepreneur and that business turn the corner and turn into, I suppose, better times and create more jobs and enter new markets? There's a perception out there that the Ernest & Young Entrepreneur of the Year Award is suitable only for larger companies, for the bigger, high-profile companies. What would you say about that myth? Yeah, um, I, I don't really think that that's fair or correct. I think we listened to Patsy Carney earlier on in the week from Ergen Pharma, who entered the programme as an emerging finalist, himself and Tom Brennan. When they entered the programme, they had 18 employees. Uh, now they have nearly 70. So it just shows you the journey they've gone on in a very short period of time, in three and a half years. And again, there are three categories. It's not sectoralised. It caters for all entrepreneurs in the island of Ireland, from, I suppose, the entrepreneurial businesses that are starting up and hopefully going to be the big brands and the big names of the future that aspiring entrepreneurs and the unemployed and other entrepreneurs can look up to and really see, look, these guys can go on that journey, well, so can we. How important is it for you to see that a, a business person, an entrepreneur, is willing to adapt their own business from a pivotal perspective? Yeah, I think, I think it's important for everyone in Ireland, not just the Ernst & Young Entrepreneur of the Year programme. Um, adaptability, flexibility... Uh, innovation are all some of the key criteria and the DNA of an awful lot of our entrepreneurs. It's very hard to define an entrepreneur and, and we've tried and we've surveyed and talked to so many entrepreneurs nationally and globally. I think it's really important to, there are similar traits and no one is the same. What are they? 
<laughs> well, the similar traits is that they, are, they have a very strong focus. Uh, they understand what they can control themselves. They don't necessarily worry about things that they can't influence. Um, they're very passionate. They have massive energy. They have a can-do attitude. They see opportunity when an awful lot of us, most of us, see adversity. And they're willing to try and give it a go. And they be fundamentally believe in themselves. And they believe in the teams of people that they've built who work with them. And they believe that they can go get it and win. And I think in Ireland we need to celebrate that. We also need to be very aware of these phenomenal entrepreneurs that are making a massive difference. Employing 140,000 people are 310 entrepreneurs. That's a massive amount of people. And I think, you know, in media we listen and we hear an awful lot of the negativity. But it's really important for Confidence in Ireland Inc. Um, to explain and share the good stories, not good news, but the good stories, the real stories of what's happening in Ireland and the positivity, the creativity and the innovation and, and to prove to everyone in Ireland that Ireland Inc is alive, that there's a lot of really good businesses out there and businesses from Ireland that are competing and winning, not just in Ireland, but globally. Is there any particular sectors that keep popping up on your finalist lists? Yeah, I think, it's a, I think our programme is a great barometer for where the innovation uh, is coming from, where the kind of sectoral growth areas are coming from. Technology is really strong um, for a number of reasons. I think we're phenomenal innovators. Um, Irish people are brilliant at selling. They're brilliant at selling into the likes of the US, very, into very niche markets that has an awful lot of innovation and creativity. Uh, life sciences and pharma is very much the same. So along with technology and life sciences, you know, we also have phenomenal service businesses and manufacturing businesses on the island of Ireland. You look at Johnny Flaherty, CNF Tooling over in Galway. You look at the likes of Rigney Dolphin here in Waterford. Businesses that are creating opportunities in niche markets and employing significant amount of people. So again, sectors coming through, the likes of um, technology, the likes of life sciences, services industry is really important. Hot Hospitality as well is now getting very, very strong as well with the likes of the gathering and what Board Falcher are doing and the initiatives for 2013. But most importantly, Irish people are so adaptable that when they maybe either worked in this particular industry or sector and they see a niche, they're quite, we're quite entrepreneurial. We're probably, you know, right up there behind the likes of the US and Canada and maybe Brazil. But in Western Europe, we're really, really strong per capita on entrepreneurship. My final question, Frank, uh, for somebody to take the time out to put in the application and to go to, through the entire process with you, what are the benefits, apart from winning the overall award, what are the other benefits that it brings, such as networking and that? Yeah, so the networking piece, I think, Carl, we've talked about in quite a lot of detail. Um, some of the other benefits are every finalist gets about €500,000 of um, marketing or advertisement benefit through the likes of our sponsorship with the Irish Times, with being on News Talk Radio, and also being profiled in our uh, five TV series on RT1, Monday night at 8.30, that'll go out in advance of our overall awards night in City West. Um, so the marketing and the profiling, the brand awareness for the entrepreneurs in all of the, all of the categories is very, very significant. Uh, all of our entrepreneurs talk about the ability for, once their brand has gone through the programme, for them to attract very strong local talent. People that are getting aware of their brand, they are able to, I suppose, associate themselves with the entrepreneurs through an awful lot of the profiling that we've done and also the brand awareness. So, you know, there are, I could sit here and talk to you all day about the benefits. One thing I would say is that this programme is about entrepreneurs. It's for entrepreneurs. We try and maximise the value all of the time to ensure that there's value being added to their businesses and to the entrepreneurs' thought leadership and innovation all of the time. So I'd really encourage all of the entrepreneurs in the Southwest to really think about it. And if they are really serious about growing their brands, growing their business, learning from peers, and most importantly, generating and creating new jobs here on the island of Ireland. We really, really want to hear from them. Well, Frank, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for coming in and discussing the Entrepreneur of the Year programme with us. And I wish you continued success 
with the programme. Here at Business Matters, we want to hear your thoughts on the show. You can contact the team here at Business Matters by emailing businessmatters at southeastradio.ie. For more information on today's show, you can read my weekly business column in The Echo. You can also follow me on Twitter at Carl Fitzpatrick or visit carlfitzpatrick.ie. That's our lot for this week's Business Matters. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank my production team, Linda Ryan, Noel Doyle and Robbie Duggan, my guests for their contribution and especially you for listening. Join me again next Saturday morning when I'll be speaking to the business leaders that you want to know more about. But in the meantime, have a great week.